me backwards. Arrive unsated with a clear conscience. Dissolve me on your tongue, but do not swallow until the last traces of pink are absorbed by the brazen sky. When the time has come to send silence a wing, use an oddly assortment of sounds, puffs, creaks, quacks, and brings. Proclaim loudly so they resound, trumpet a honk in no particular key. Hoots have a peculiar elegance, worry not about melody. Howls can shred the silence, embellish the stillness with color and spice. Guttural growls and chesty warbles emulate songbirds in the squeaks of mice. Mimic the clatter of falling marbles and fuse joy into the present tense, celebrate soundly noise and nonsense. She is scared that she will tremble. Not because she is cold, or because barbarians are pounding at her door, or she's about to be persecuted, persecuted, but for no apparent reason, that she will tremble. And since she is about to die, even though everything around her is quiet, unthreatening, no one is bothering her. She is scared of the things she sees in the daylight and of the things she may say. Other times, it is the consistency, the fleeting moments, beginnings, middles, endings, her recollection of what she did last time, a fluttering belief that she is never able to do better more than her best that scares her. She is scared of the things that may appear on walls written about her, what may appear in somebody's hand, of what she may read on a piece of paper that appears in front of her, of anything she may read that she believes is written about her, whether or not it was whether or not the words are true or derogatory, whether or not anyone else would construe the words as being about her. But her greatest fear is that she will tremble and that the terror wrought by nothing more than the beauty of it all will creep through her shoulders, her chest, her arms, will enter her lungs, constrict her thought throat, and that once again she will not feel safe in the space or time separating her from the moment hurtling her way. Mm -hmm.